What are the hallmarks of aging? Well, that is exactly what I am going to look at today in this quick and easy introduction guide. Aging is a series of interconnected processes on the biochemical, genetic, and physiological level that are characterized by a progressive loss of physiological integrity, leading to an impaired function and increased vulnerability to death. This deterioration is the primary risk factor for major human pathologies, including cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disorders, and neurodegenerative diseases. Epigenetic alterations. Your genome is more than just a long sequence of DNA letters. DNA strands are wound around spools of protein called histones, and both DNA and histones can have various chemical handles, cranks, and levers attached to them to help them turn genes on or off. These handles, cranks, and levers comprise your epigenome. All this changes as you age. Imagine, all the cells and their processes require constant interaction and communication for their day-to-day -day function, and even more widely if in reaction to an illness or injury. Of the billions of these processes, sometimes some go wrong and this can lead to levers being lost, added inappropriately, or shifted around, leading to compromised gene activity. Sirtuins play a role here, but they will have to come up in detail in a future episode. Your epigenome can be modified by diet, exercise, hot and cold exposure, meditation or mindfulness, sleep, and pharmaceuticals. And that is not an exhaustive list. Loss of proteostasis. The main job of genes is to make proteins. Proteins regulate virtually all chemical reactions and provide cell structure. Protein homeostasis or proteostasis is the maintenance of all proteins in their original form and abundance. These proteins fold in multiple ways so they can interact with whatever is required. But over time, the accuracy of this fold can slip. This can lead them to not doing their job and even worse, linking with the wrong things which can cause clumping and toxicity. Alzheimer's disease is an example of an age-related disease caused by protein misfolding. When this happens, the body at Optimum has more than enough systems to detect and correct the error. Proteins can be repaired and refolded and those that are beyond help can be disposed of and replaced easily. The reduction in this capacity is known as a loss of proteostasis. Deregulated nutrient sensing. When nutrients are abundant, cells seek to grow and reproduce, but when nutrients are scarce, they seek to focus on maintenance and repair. This is the bit rapamycin targets, but more about that in its own guide. Mitochondrial dysfunction. Mitochondria are the places where most of your cell's energy is produced. They are often called the powerhouses of the cell. In their day-to-day -day function, they produce byproducts such as free radicals, also referred to as reactive oxygen species or ROS in your cells. Cells, organs, and tissues that sense stress increase their maintenance and repair processes. Both too much and too little have both shown negative results, and the current thinking suggests that ROS production should be in a Goldilocks zone, just the right amount. Cellular senescence. Sometimes cells that are no longer functioning at optimum are not broken down and disposed of. They persist and secrete damaging molecules into the surrounding area, clogging up systems and impairing function. These accumulate with age, and studies have shown in mice that removal of them leads to more optimal functioning or rejuvenation. There are drugs in production and trial that target this already. Stem cell exhaustion. Healthy stem cells must replicate, but only when required. 
This ability to replicate only when needed declines with age. It allows our tissues and organs to regenerate and repair damage and is critical to maintaining health. We have these in virtually every tissue. Studies have had positive results, holding hope that this may not be an issue in the future. Altered intercellular communication. Appropriate communication among cells and tissues is important to maintaining optimum health. Hormones are one way cells communicate. Hormones produced in the brain alter the way cells behave in the rest of the body and vice versa. When the system is at optimum, inflammation is a signal that there is a problem using hormones as the messengers. For instance, it signals the pain of an injury to the brain, the clotting systems to stem blood flow, cell walls to repair, damaged connections to repair, guarding against infection, and so much more. At optimum, inflammation is turned on and off when needed, but low level inflammation is not injury related, but constant, and constant inflammation damages surrounding tissue. This can prevent growth and also mask important signals from other areas that are in need of resources and assistance. Studies aiming to target this issue are well underway on both lifestyle and pharmaceutical areas. Genomic instability. Your DNA is under attack constantly from both outside and within from radiation and chemicals externally to the oxygen-free radicals internally that we just mentioned. But at optimum, your body has systems to detect and repair all this. However, repair is not perfect and damage to our genome can accumulate. Cancer is one result of unrepaired DNA damage and in individuals with compromised DNA repair processes, multiple signs of accelerated aging can be seen. There is evidence dietary restriction or fasting can target this area. Telomere attrition. This is really genomic instability, but gets its own category and is probably one of the widest known of all these hallmarks. Telomeres are repetitive sequences of DNA that protect the ends of chromosomes and prevent them from being mistaken for broken DNA strands. Normal cell division shortens telomeres as do other processes. When critically short, their replication machinery is stopped. This is called telomere attrition. An enzyme called telomerase, which is turned off in most adult cells, can prevent telomere shortening and even restore telomere length. My studies have shown positive results in this so far. As Aubrey de Grey has pointed out, we think this is everything, and we now think we know enough to say this encapsulates everything, and we think they are all within our scope of returning to optimum. So one day, there may be an end to ageing.